All right, Free Yourself Radio back here on Indie Jams. You already know we're here with the one and only Ray Duvo coming all the way live from New York, okay? What's good, what's good, what's good? What up? <laughs> I love the swag right here. Thank you, Tell thank me about you. that, like your whole aesthetic. What, what, what's all this? I love it. Yeah, so I just got my dreads put in recently. I'm Puerto Rican and Jamaican, and my dad just has hey. like full locks. Okay. But it's like I stole his name because I'm a junior. I stole his face because I'm like direct copy and paste from him. So I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna do a full head of dreads. I just got my wisdom and faith. Mm. Get my two dreads locked Love in. That. Okay. And lock in that energy, you know? Got the feather and stuff <laughs> yep. like that. Got my feathers, got my crystals, you know. Yes. Keep that energy. Yeah, so real excited to have you here. You came all the way, you know, from New York. I know you're competing tonight as well. We Absolutely. Bring Absolutely. That energy. So <laughs> tell us more about you and like where you <clears throat> where you're from and how you kinda got started, you know, doing music. Yes, yeah, so I was born in the Bronx, um, but at like the age of five, my mom moved us, my mom and pops moved us upstate to kind of get out of that troubled area, mm -hmm. moved to the suburbs, um, and from there, you know, I've just been there my whole life, and, um, you know, that's where I discovered my love for music, I discovered mm -hmm. my love for arts, my school, yeah. had great art programs, oh, which okay. was pretty dope, nice. you know. <laughs> okay, okay. So you grew up around music, or how did you like really get into it? What what kind of got you really into it? Yo, it's crazy because like nobody else in my family really does music, so really? it just kind of like we tried to do like ancestry and try to figure out who. Mm, I did that too. But mm -hmm. <laughs> only connection I had was I believe it was my mom's grandfather. Dang. He did music, and um, but pretty much at. Uh, what, first grade, they asked me to sing the national anthem for our school's like Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. My mom went, she heard me sing, and she was just shaking. She's like, holy shit, I don't know what to do with this. Oh, <laughs> man. So that's dope. It's like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a tattoo. Like, there's not many people in my family that are artistic as well. You know? Yeah. So it's really dope to tap into that and things like that. So what do you love, like, the most about, you know, your artistic side? Like, what brings you the most joy when it comes to music and artistry? You know what it is? It's... The thing with music is that it's a passion, so it's something that doesn't just come from here, it comes from inside of my soul and inside of my heart, and what I love best is being able to use music as a muse mm. in all different outlets of my life, um, whether I'm going through a bad time or a good time, just to be able to write and share my story with everybody else, yeah. you know, that's what's making it worth it for me, you know, okay. finding people that relate a little right. bit. Yeah. Okay, so what would be like... One of your main goals, you know, when it comes to your music and your artistry. One of my main goals, MSG. I would love to perform in my home state at Madison Square Garden. I've what? seen a lot of people perform there. And it's definitely a high bar, but nothing is impossible, right. you know. Um, yeah, speaking into existence, yeah, absolutely. I will Manifestation. perform in Madison Square Garden. Manifestation, absolutely. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's one of my goals, but not only to make it there, but to remain happy while mm. doing it. You know, I find that... That part. Yeah, it's like, I don't want to lose my humble beginnings mm. and new come fame or anything like that. It yeah. could, it's a it's a hard industry and, mm. you know, it could put you down at points, but yeah. remain that positive energy and staying, you know, positive. That's all that really matters to him, mm. remaining happy. You know. Yeah, I'm glad that you said that because I feel like a lot of times people do things and we all kind of like put on that smile and fake the funk. Yeah. And it's like, are you even really like happy to be here? You just forcing it, just pushing through, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it's like, you got to really do what you love and you got to really feel it. No, like if, sure. it, if, if it doesn't feel right, then maybe you shouldn't do it, you know? For real. So For I, real. Uh, I understand and I agree. Um, and I think it's important to not like lose yourself and get, you know, caught in the motion. For know? sure. So tell me more about, um, you know, like New York and what the scene is like over there in regards to like music and everything. Yeah, so right now New York is really, I feel more so on that trap wave. New York is just a talented place, period. Mm -hmm. You know, you have all different genres, all different people, all different art forms. And, you know, I'm blessed to be in such a city that the diversity is there through art because, um, I don't like to just stick to one genre, but at mm -hmm. the same time, I don't like to try to sound like everybody else. I like to develop my own thing, and New York gives me that freedom. Where, you know? Okay. Yeah. 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 So, um, has, has there ever been a point where you felt like giving up, or you felt like, nah, I can't do this no more, or things like that, and then you had to kind of push through? Yeah, for 
for sure, for sure. You know, um, it's crazy because like doing music, what a lot of people don't see is the financial hardships that mm -hmm. come along with doing it. They don't understand how much money we dump right. into each track. You gotta do your studio time, y'all. Yep. You, you gotta do um it's an investment. Yeah. Just invest in yourself and um I found myself working my plan B job, which was at a warehouse, and not saying it wasn't a good fit for me, but I just wasn't passionate about it, mm -hmm. and I found myself I losing myself in yeah. my job. And yeah. Yeah, so I pretty much took out that plan B, I left that, and aligned my plan B with my plan A. Exactly. So, I, right now, I work for the airlines, I do the flight. Uh oh, okay, you don't have to hook us up, okay? Because, yeah. you know, we were sending artists out here to New York, you know, in yeah. the gyms and all of us, yeah. Yep, so I use that job to my advantage to get me to What's travel the and network. Again? I'm going <laughs> to keep that confidence. Ah, okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, no, I hear you though. You know, you have to sometimes have that one job to fund the other job. Because, yeah. you know, you got to do what you love, but you also got to make the bread to feed your family. Absolutely. So it's important to have that healthy balance. And then also having a job that you love to support your dream. Right. And that also works and coincides with your dream. Mm -hmm. That is what's going to take you to the next level. You know, building your steps. To help you reach your yeah. next goal, okay. you know. So I know you said you're really in touch with your roots, right? Yeah. And you said you're Jamaican and what? Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican, Jamaica. So, ¿cuál es español? No, I what they call a fake Puerto Rican. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Hispanic, so I just tricked into yeah, it. Yeah, oh, you got me on that. Yes, yeah, I'm from Miami, so I speak a little bit. Nah, I say muy muy poco. They start telling me paragraphs and I'm lost. So. Really? Yeah, oh, I'm damn. trying to learn though. I'm definitely trying to learn. But, okay. um, I was gonna ask you the reason I brought it up is because I was gonna say, do you t you know touch in with your roots and like with your music and with your vibe? Yeah, actually, I got on um, my next project coming out. Um, even though I don't speak Spanish, mm -hmm. I took it upon myself to write a song in Spanish okay. on my own. You know, I reviewed it with friends that do speak Spanish to make okay. sure it's politically correct. Right, <laughs> and I'm saying everything right, mm -hmm. but it's you know it. You it gotta read Pablo fire. Neruda. Yeah, he's a poet. Pablo Neruda is a great poet. Pablo Spanish Neruda. Poet. Uh, yeah, Pablo yeah. Neruda. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> got a ring to it. Yeah. It's like he's going to start freestyling. Oh, that's fire. Word. You like to freestyle ever? Um, nah, so I'm more so of a writer. Mm -hmm. Like, when I do my music, I like to sit down, meditate yeah. on my lyrics, okay. uh, work on my wordplay and stuff like that. When it comes to freestyling, it's too quick off the dome. I hear you. And I feel like. My yeah. brain is thinking fast, but my mouth cannot mm. catch up. <laughs> so what's your process like when you create your music? You say you meditate, what do you do? Yeah, so when I'm creating music, I try to think of a topic mm -hmm. um, that builds on my last track. Yeah. So I try to follow a little bit of a storyline. And what I do is I listen to a beat, I feel it out, I vibe. You know, I do my la da da is just coming up with melodies. And then I plug in my words after and I just start getting my poetry on oh, right okay. in, Very nice. you know, for considering you know, like wordplay, yeah. double entendres. Well, stuff have you like heard that. of Urban Words in New York? Yes. yes really? Oh my God. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we we have a nonprofit here to Exodus. Oh, we take youth out to and Urban Words is a dope, um, yeah, yeah, dope organization. Is. They were there in Cali. They they did the thing with the kids. Like yeah, yeah, they're fire. You gotta check out New York and Poets Cafe. Nah, I definitely New York Rican that and your Puerto Rican. <laughs> I'm not in Puerto Rican. You gotta go out there. <laughs> yeah, that's fire. I think it's important uh, for all of us, you know, to have our process like when we go to write and things like that. So we're about to introduce one of your tracks, though. We want to listen to it. So tell us a little bit about the tracks that you selected today. Like, why did you pick them? You know, what do they mean yeah. to you? So these next two tracks um, are gonna be the first releases on my new project. I was gonna submit stuff from my old project 23, but I was like, you know what, it's a new era, it's a new me. Um, let me introduce where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. And I did a song called Hit My Line, which is pretty much like talking about a girl at a club, you know, and just, I guess, like trying to pick her up and let her know, like, hit my line, you could come chill with me whenever you want. I have an open door, you know. Um, just hit, yeah, welcome. Just hit, you hit my up. line, hit me up. And then I did a song called Wind Up with my friend Couture. Yeah. And that was dope because that was like the, one of the first collaborations that I 
felt energy with. Okay. And when I wrote with him, you know, he wrote his part. I was like, yo, bro, I never felt such um a connection with somebody yeah. in the booth. We musically harmonized That's with important. each other and that synchronization. That definitely, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we better introduce one of Ray Duval's first tracks over here on Free Yourself Radio Indie Jam. So you already know, stay tuned. Let's go. Let's let it rock. I based my whole album on that club scene that's coming out. Uh-huh. And um, it picks up where my last EP left off, right. which uh, was titled 23. It had part one, Journey of Ray Duval, part two, Siren. And Siren started introducing like the party life there, and this is just a continuation from there. Okay. Yeah. Fire. Yeah, <laughs> I love that vibe. It's really I like songs that actually make you want to move and like dance. Yeah, and, like, kinda you gotta have fun with it, you know. Like <laughs> yeah. So um, I would love for you to give like a piece of advice for like an artist who might be starting out, who might be feeling discouraged or you know need some hope. Like what what would you tell a younger you, or like what kind of would you give? Like, a, as a recommendation. To tell a younger me or any young artist out <clears throat> yeah. there that is entering this game, just understand that it is a difficult business. Not everybody's going to like what you're doing, and you got to no. be able to take that criticism, um, but don't lose who you are in other people's opinions. You know, that's the most Facts. important thing, is staying original to you. And um, network, network, network. Mm-hmm. We live in a day and age that we have social media. Reach out. Find people. If you hear somebody that you like, yeah. hit up, hit them up in their DMs. Be like, yo, let's work. You know, the community Don't is there. Don't be afraid there. to reach out. Yeah. Yeah. So have you ever had an experience where you reach out and then they like, they're just like, nah. Oh, absolutely. I've reached out to people and um, you know, they be like, oh, send me a track. Yeah. Then they just tell me, oh, I don't think we're gonna be a fit. Okay, that's fine. Okay. And vice versa, you know, I've had to tell people that try to reach out to me. You know, they send me a track and just their message and their stuff was not there or they're not taking it as serious as mm-hmm. I am. And I just have to tell them nicely, like, hey, yo, keep working. You know, unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to do this collaboration with you. Exactly. But we can always build the connection and grow together and maybe one day we can. Facts. You know? Yeah. I think it's important to, you know, have that, like, that confidence in yourself that even if somebody doesn't want to work with you or collaborate, you're just like, it's okay, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So who have you collaborated with that you, that was a really fun time or like a good experience? So Couture was like the first collaborator that I was like, dang, we got this energy in the club. I did a track with Couture. I did um, a track with my boy Lenny, Mm -hmm. you know, and he was a, that was a great time too, you know, it's that chemistry you have in the Mm -hmm. studio with somebody that, It doesn't just stay business, it goes to a fun place. Yeah, and you build that connection with them. Um, I also got a collaboration with, um, oh man, how am I blanking out on this guy's name? Ah. Somebody. Yeah. (laughs) I got a collaboration with a Spanish artist from New York, uh, Ralphie Hayes. Yup. And that's going to be on this next project. This next project is going to have multiple collaborators right. on it. And it's going to be my first time really releasing something with that's other with people. That's with HM? The one you um, with HM? Or no, I didn't do that beat with HM. Oh, okay. I had a guy upstate New York do oh, the beat okay, for okay, me. Okay. Yeah. Fire, fire, fire. So um, tell us a little bit more about like your upbringing. Like, how was it, like, as far as outside of just the music yeah. industry? Like, so my upbringing was pretty humble. I grew up in pretty much a suburban town that everybody from the city likes to run away to. Mm, <laughs> really? When gentrification hit, everybody oh, okay. moved upstate because it's cheaper and you get more bang for your buck. Mm-hmm. And um, it was pretty humble. I grew up with my three sisters. That was great. Oh, all girls. Absolutely. Mm. All girls I and have one boy. <laughs> and I always kids. wanted a brother. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I grew up in school as dealt with ADHD pretty much my entire mm. life. I was always too hyper for people. And oh, yeah. that got to me at one point, but you know, you learn and you live and you learn to love yourself mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to what everybody else thinks, you okay. know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I understand because I teach middle school, so a lot of them kids, yeah. they, they deal with that and stuff like that, but that's most important. So, um, you know, a lot of times, like, artists, you know, they get nervous, they get stage fright. Yeah. Do you feel that still? Like, are you nervous for tonight? Listen, I am humbly calm right now, but, but. my hits is that my nerves kick in, like, 
once they call my name and I'm like, oh crap, I'm about to go up, I start getting nervous and jittery because it's like, I want to present my music and perform it the way for that them that I set yeah, my standard I, and bar, so I want everybody to perceive that and get that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but once I'm on that stage and the music comes on, it just disappears and vanishes mm -hmm. and then I can free myself and put myself into the performance. Okay. How do you feel like it affects your mental health, like doing music and creating and performing? Music, music has saved my mental health, if anything. Um, I, you know, as I said, dealing with ADHD, it's hard to focus, but when I write music, I get so just tuned in. Anything with art, I paint as well. So, you know, anything with painting or the arts, that's where I thrive at. And um, being able to <coughs> use music as that muse to not only share what I'm going through, but reaching that level of vulnerability to letting everybody in on the deeper side of me, right. you know? And I did that for my first project in part one, Journey of Rageable. I talked about my motives, the rise, the fall, and the redemption of Rageable, which goes over my struggles with ADHD and bipolar three. Oh. So, you know, it definitely has helped me find mm -hmm. that muse and that yeah. space to And thank you for being go. so transparent and open because, Absolutely. you know, like I said, when we, we say and we acknowledge, like, listen, I have this, I deal with this, it gives hope for other people, like, it's okay, you know? Yeah. And, like, we work through it and we use it to our advantage. For sure, yeah. especially with mental health from going from a place that wasn't so heavily talked about to now being in a day and age where it's okay and, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a problem or you feel like something's going on, it's okay. As long as you try to address the issue in a healthy mm, manner in a and healthy take care manner, of it, yeah. seek your help, Facts. it's all right. Yeah. Well, we got another one of your tracks, and before yep. we introduce it, tell us where people can find you, how they can contact you for collabs, for yeah, bookings, absolutely. all that. Yeah, absolutely. So for collaborations, feel free to hit me up on IG. It's RayDevo23, R-A-Y-D-U-V-O. 23 that stands for reach after your dreams under various outcomes hey. so you can hit me up Acronym. on ig there um yeah just mostly ig 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 and if you want to find my music my music my new album will be everywhere once it drops you can keep track on that on my ig and right now my first project 23 is listed on soundcloud under ray devoe all right we better get into it make sure y'all contact him he's in town he's Booked and busy can be more booked and busy from New York. Got the whole squad. Somebody getting vegan food and all that. I don't know who, but you know. I'm not saying. Everybody get into it. Make sure y'all follow him. Just free yourself. Indie Jams. Let's go.